Zion family and friends, it's great to be in the house of worship this morning. We are so excited that you join us for Cam Emphasis Sunday and this virtual worship experience. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. 
let us pray. God, thank you. You are awesome and you are holy. And we thank you for another opportunity to worship and praise you. Bless everyone who has tuned in today. Bless our congregation. And we thank you for continuing to just be a guide in our lives. We ask that you bless the person who will bring forth the word today. Bless the shepherd of this house, Dr. Leonard Ann Smith. And we just ask that you bless this worship experience. In the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please prepare yourself for the sacred scripture. Our sacred scripture reading is found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 10 and verse 40. The King James Version reads this way, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold there, the stones would immediately cry out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Mount Zion. Join in with the We Worship team as we sing the hymn, Jesus Loves Even Me. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. to have as our Creative Art Ministries Emphasis Sunday guest preacher, Reverend Dr. Denise S. Wilson, Senior Pastor of the Rock Christian Church in Falls Church, Virginia. A native of Middleburg, Virginia, Dr. Wilson is the eldest daughter of Horace Marlowe and the late Shirley Tenor. She accepted the call to ministry in September 2004 and has degrees in Biblical Studies and Christian Education from Faith Christian University a master's in theology from Newburgh Theological Seminary. And in 2012, she received an honorary doctorate from the American Bible University. Dr. Wilson founded the Wilson Ministry Foundation in 2005, an evangelistic organization which hosts an annual women's conference, bruised but not broken. In April, 2010, she published her first book, Feed My Sheep, based on her work in homeless ministry. Her sophomore book, You Can Begin Again, 
was published in March 2018. In June 2008, she was honored as the first minister in the PreachingWoman.com Kingdom Watch section as a preacher to watch. She hosted the Heart to Heart segment of In the Cool of the Day, a Fairfax Access Cable Station program. She is president of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Northern Virginia, a member of the National Council of Negro Women, past president of Falls Church Community Council Services, and proud to be a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She was awarded the 2015 Community Service Award by the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs. On November 6, 2011, she founded the Rock Christian Center in Falls Church. She has two daughters, Nakia McIntyre and Janae Struther. She also has three grandsons, Khalil, Corey, and Kadir McIntyre. Her favorite scripture is Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. After the sermonic selection, Dr. Wilson will preach God's holy word. Let us be in prayer as we do for all who grace the sacred desk at Mount Zion. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He's a wonderful God. Lord, we praise you today. The scripture says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So I want you to just make a sanctuary where you are and begin to praise our God. Sing when we praise. When we praise. When we No, when you pray, when we pray, when you pray, there should be a fire in your heart. When you pray. Praise, let us 
Come on and lift those hands and praise him. Come on and magnify the Lord. He's right where you are. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I first want to give honor to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved me one day and filled me with his precious Holy Ghost. I want to give honor to your pastor, Bishop Leonard N. Smith, and I thank God for his leadership in the church, in the community, and his support of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Northern Virginia and vicinity. And to all the members and friends of this great church, Mount Zion Baptist Church, good morning. I want to thank the Creative Arts Ministry for this invitation to share with you this morning on your emphasis day. I do not take this honor lightly. Your theme this morning is there is power in your prayer and praise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sermonic scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19, and we will be reading one verse from that scripture, verse 40. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. I'm going to read it one more time. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. So for the next few minutes that I have with you, I'm going to preach on the theme, there is power in your praise. Let me start off by making a confession. Confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. So before we get started, I have to tell you that I have an addiction. I've been addicted for over 40 years. I just can't stop. It started when I was about 20 years old and there's been a steady progression ever since. And it's no wonder that I have this addiction because my mother was addicted and my grandmother too. This addiction is so bad that on the night my grandmother went to be with the Lord after her last bout with cancer, I found out that after everybody left the house, my mother was downstairs doing it. And as I was driving home that night, I felt the urge to do it too. In fact, we were actually doing it as she passed away. I have to tell you this and confess this to you, and I hope you won't hold it against me. I'm addicted to praise. Sometimes I find myself doing it and not even realizing it. I'll be driving down the road, a song will come on the radio, and before I know it, I'm in the mode of praise. Beloved, we've been in a pandemic, a global pandemic for the last year. The normal rhythms of a nascent spring were interrupted last March by the sudden appearance of COVID-19. We were thrust into a world of unknowns, uncertainties, and disbelief. The world as we knew it had come to a screeching halt. People were rushing to the stores to, be, to get the essentials and there was no Lysol in sight. Jobs that were once secure were now on furloughed status. High school seniors that were getting ready for proms and graduations had to face the fact that they would be robbed of the pomp and circumstance and had to settle for a diploma in the mail. People in good health were now fighting a disease where there was seemingly no cure. Church doors that were open and full on Sundays were now closed. 
without a return notice in sight. Our world was literally turned upside down. And if you read the paper or listened to the news, your own spirituality was being challenged and checked. We were mandated to wear masks and shelter in place. Many were unable to see loved ones and Zoom and FaceTime became our new mode of communication. Our prayers that were once melancholy and repetitious were now prayers of dissolution and desperation. Prayers that were once prayed with vigor and assurance were now prayers to God for an urgent divine response. But in all of our anxieties with what was going on in the world, as we prayed in time, we knew God was still an on-time God. I was watching a talk show and the topic was extremely disturbing to me religion in science class, why creationism and intelligent design don't belong there. Proponents of religious theories of creation have recently renewed their efforts to persuade schools to teach creationism, creation science, and intelligent design theory alongside or in place of evolution. Evolution is the theory that human species evolved from apes. This triggered a controversy in a number of state legislatures, the Board of Education, and among parents. The conversations of the host was that so many theories of, cre of the creation of the world, whether by religion or science, it seemed to question should religion be actively discussed in a classroom setting along with other science. One of the hosts said evolution is based on a scientific fact, not a religious theory. Another said creation is a theory based on religion. Now another said, now if science is about science and not religion, why place religious theories in the mix? She said she believes science should be strictly science and religion, strictly religion. She said, if you want to be taught or hear about religious theories, go to church. She said that and it struck a nerve. They didn't have a problem with us worshiping God, just keep him in the building. Go to church, sing a few songs, hear the preach word, get the benediction, but leave God there. I believe that pre-pandemic Christians had gotten too comfortable and complacent in that building. We were like the church at Lady Osea. We'd lost our excitement. We were neither hot or cold. Our services had become mundane, routine, lacking interest or excitement. I submit we were operating pre-pandemic on a power deficiency. Oh yeah, we showed up on Sunday, did what was required, but we'd forgotten about our power. We show up, did our dance, sang a few songs, but there was no atmospheric change. Our worship should produce change. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom, unstrained worship. Burdens are loosened, chains unshackled. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get no help this morning. The book of Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the definition of power is the ability to act or produce an effect, manifested change. Power on the inside, working on the outside to produce. People came to church and instead of getting meat that will sustain them, convict them and change them, we served them Similac and they were hungry again before the church service ended. Now I'm not talking about your church, Mount Zion. I'm talking about the church in general. Even when you turned on the radio, you have to look at the dial to make sure you're on the gospel station because gospel artists are now sounding like secular artists using the excuse they're trying to reach the lost. But the truth of the matter is they're more interested in making money than sharing the good news. We used to be able to hear music, 
that would touch our souls and lead us to a place of worship. I submit to you today that the church had gotten quiet. Yeah, we were making noise in the church, but not affecting change. Jesus was saying in the book of Luke, man refusing to give Jesus, the creator, his just due, praise and adoration will make the creation shake, tremble, roar, clap, cry, and worship God in our place. Luke chapter 19 verse 40 is simply a metaphoric expression regarding the fact that there was undeniable proof that the power of Christ had been revealed. The miraculous works were clear to prove to all except the Pharisees who refused to acknowledge Jesus. They were busy holding on to their religious etiquette when the crowd burst into song and dance. Jesus was talking about the religious leaders and the fact that if they didn't praise him, there was going to be a shift in the atmosphere. The rocks would cry out. So my brothers and sisters, God has taken us out of the building so that we could reposition ourselves outside of the building and learn to praise God in a new way with a new attitude and a new vision. He gave us a new audience and a new platform. We've been living in a pandemic over the last years and the church doors have been closed. But I submit to you this morning that the church still has power. There is power in your praise. Praise is an act of worship or acknowledgement by which the virtues or deeds of another are recognized or, or extolled. Our praise toward God is the means by which we express our joy in the Lord. Now, let me say this. Praise is not about you. The sacrifice of praise comes from a humble heart that has been purified by fire. It rises from a spirit that has chosen to honor God in spite of the pain that life is causing. Praise is not about how you feel. Praise is do our God for what he bought you out of, how he set you free. He never gave up on you. He made peace, joy, and hope available to you. He listens to you when you pray and rescues, rescued you through salvation in Jesus Christ. We are to praise God for who he is and what he does. Praising God for who he is is called adoration. Praising him for what he does is called thanksgiving. In other words, praise is an act of the soul because the Bible says they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. When we have an authentic praise on the inside, there ought to be an atmospheric reconstruction on the outside. We should praise God for his surpassing greatness in our lives. P true praise cannot be contained. The prophet Jeremiah said it best. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word in my heart is like fire shut up in my bones. Praise brings us peace in a place of humility. We remember our dependency on God as we acknowledge our need for him. As we praise him as creator and king of this world, we admit and recognize we are not in control, but he is. He is above all. Jesus said, if we don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, the rocks are crying out. Things are happening in the world right now that have never happened before. We're experiencing hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods that are devastating cities like we've never seen before. The rocks are crying out. We're experiencing a global pandemic that has crippled the world and confused even the most reputable scientists. I tell you, the rocks are crying out. We've seen unjust police brutality with black men and women being brutally murdered in these streets just for being black. Dante Wright, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, 
Rayshad Brooks and Bothan Jean, just to name a few. The rocks are crying out. We're seeing political insurrections in our nation and government officials are doing what's right in their own eyes, lying to the people and holding our nation hostage. The rocks are crying out, but I tell you the answer is in our praise. Psalms 107.31 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalms 98.1 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained victory for him. 1 Peter 2.9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We should be praising God as the Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord should be praised. We should praise Praise him in the morning, in the noon hour, in the evening, and at midnight. Praise him for where he's brought us through. Praise him for where he's taking us to. Praise him for what we used to be. Praise him for what we are right now. Praise him for where we're going to be. Praise him when we're happy. Praise him when we're sad. Praise him in season and out of season. Praise him for our going out and our coming in. The devil thought he had us out, but our praise was not limited to our location. The Bible tells us God is everywhere. Where can I flee from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wing or settle on the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. You should praise him in the church. Praise him in the community in the city, in the country, on our jobs, in our home, on Facebook, in Zoom, in Twitter, and on Instagram. And it goes on to say, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. That's why I know I didn't come from no monkey. I am made in God's own image. Psalm 150 tells us as a community of faith to praise God. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with high sounding cymbals. And just in case you think you've been left out, it ends with let everything praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if you have breath in your body, everybody ought to praise the Lord. We've got to praise him because back on Calvary, on an old rugged cross, Jesus hung, bled, and died for you and for me. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And that's why there is power in your praise. And in that same power, we need to recognize Jesus is coming back. I said, uh, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you will be where I am. So if we were in the building, I would say, turn to your neighbor, but let's just take a couple of minutes to praise and minister to ourselves and say to ourselves, no rock's going to cry for me because I still have power in my praise. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. We thank God for his blessed word on this morning. 
We were blessed today and we hope that you were too and that you remain for the most important part of our worship experience. That is the invitation to Christian discipleship. Here we invite you, if you do not know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we invite you to be a part of this Christian discipleship. If you would, please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I am a sinner. Right now, I choose to turn away from sin and I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross to take away my sins. I also believe that he rose again from the dead so that I may be justified and made righteous through faith in him. I call on the name of Jesus Christ to be the savior and Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to follow you and I ask that you fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that right now I am born again child of God. I am free from sin and full of the righteousness of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you prayed this prayer with me, you are saved and we warmly welcome you to the body of Christ. If you're interested in joining the Mount Zion Baptist Church, I encourage you to call us at 703 979 one, one. Again, 703-979-7411. Or feel free to send us an email, info at mountzionbaptist.com. Again, info at mountzionbaptist.com. Welcome to the fellowship. God bless. It is offering time now at Mount Zion Baptist Church. If there is any time we get excited, it is that offering time. We know that due to our inability to gather, we are unable to receive our offering in the traditional manner. However, we invite you to take advantage of the opportunity to give. There are four ways to give to Mount Zion. First, you may give via the Easy Tithe app on your cell phone. You can easily download the app to your smart device to give. Second, you may also give via our Easy Tithe app by calling 703-372-9244. Again, you may text your offering to 703-372-9244. Third, you may also give by visiting our website, mountzionbaptist.com. Click on Online Giving and follow the prompts to complete your online giving. That website, again, is mountzionbaptist.com. Click on online giving and follow the prompts to complete your online giving. And then, lastly, you may give by mailing your offering to Mount Zion Baptist Church, Post Office Box 6216, Arlington, Virginia 22206. Finally, once again, you can mail your offering to us at Mount Zion Baptist Church, Post Office Box 6216, Arlington, Virginia 22206. This address also appears on your screen. Any way you bless us will be satisfied. Thank you so much for your willingness to give. Remember, although we're not able to meet traditionally, the need for your gifts still remains. The ministry continues even though we're unable to meet. God bless you and thank you so much for your support. Let's pray over the offering. God, we thank you for the privilege to give. We pray that you bless us in each giver. Please bless the offering and empower us to be good stewards over the tithes and offering and that it be used to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we thank you for your generosity. Good morning, Mount Zion family and friends. It is my pleasure to welcome our visitors this morning. We thank you for visiting us here at Mount Zion on Creative Arts Ministries Emphasis Sunday. It is our hope that something said or done will inspire and carry you throughout the week and the weeks to come. If you are without a church home, we invite you to join Mount Zion. 
the growing church where everybody is special, for we are a kingdom-focused church. If you wish to learn additional information about our fellowship, please visit our website at www.mountzionbaptist.com. We also invite you to follow us on various social media platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please remember to share and like us on these various social media platforms. You may contact us by calling our church office at 703-979-7411. Again, on behalf of Pastor Smith and Mount Zion, we thank you for worshiping with us today. And now for our thought for the week. Music, dance, and theater are integral components of the worship experience. Creative arts helps us to hear God's voice, sense his presence, and grow in our faith. And now for our special announcement. Please join us next Sunday for Young Adult Emphasis Sunday. Our guest preacher is Rev. Kevin Gresham II, minister to children, youth, and young adults at the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Largo, Maryland. Please join us next Sunday at the Mount for Young Adult Emphasis Sunday. You will be blessed. Amen. Let me bless you. Now and unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless with exceeding great joy, be power, dominion, and majesty now and forth and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen, and thank God. Let us go in peace until we meet again. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless you is my prayer. Amen.